Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's early morning in Sydney. It's very, very cold. (laughs) My hands are numb. But uh, it's the dawn of another beautiful day. It's Tuesday morning. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go on a walk and talk. And I'll go through a book summary today entitled... A Guide to a Good Life. So I'll just head off over here so that I can get to some light. And see what we can learn from this book. All of the uh, the lamps over here are switched off. And it may be because of the uh, the hotel... So uh, let me get some light over here first and uh, see what we can gauge from this book summary. So uh, this book kicks off with a, a quote from the author where he says, the easiest way for us to gain happiness. Once again, another book on happiness. There are so many books that I've gone through over the past few months that focus on happiness. I guess it's one of those points that everybody wants to learn about and everybody wants to get more of in their lives. But according to this author, from this book summary, the easiest way for us to gain happiness is to learn how to want the things we already have. So... How profound, how profound indeed is that? The best way, the easiest way to uh, gain happiness is to learn to enjoy the things that we already have. I guess it would be really, really interesting looking inside everybody's head and just to think or just to see what they're thinking of. Because I guess, like most of us, you know, we're all thinking about the things that we don't have or the things that we want to have as opposed to appreciating and celebrating the things that we already have. Things like our good health, things like our families, our partners, our work, our religion, our culture, our heritage. And yet people are always searching, always searching for something more, something new, something exciting, and basically ignoring or not making the most of what they already have. And I guess this, uh, this insatiable thirst for something new, something different, is probably causing many people uh, a lot of challenges because uh, they're never satisfied because they're always on the move, on the lookout for uh, you know a new girlfriend, a new car, a new whatever, new job. Never happy with the job that they've got. So. Uh, an interesting, an interesting look at life and uh, a relevant look at life as well. Because the author then goes on to talk about the, uh, the importance of learning how to embrace stoic, stoic qualities. And the stoic qualities, I guess, were celebrated and came from a, a branch of ancient Greek philosophy. Uh, there was a, a school of philosophy called the Stoics and the objective of that school of uh, philosophy was to learn to live with less and to be less distracted and only make room and a thirst for the most important things in our lives rather than just fill it up with uh, 
amounts of junk in order to uh, to try and fill, fill fulfilled so let me just put down the folder that I've got here so I can free my arms up and have a look at what we've got here so to my friends in Greece I'm at a at a part here of uh, Circular Quay where we've got the Opera House directly across the other side and you can walk over to the other side there and if I pan around we've got the magnificent Opera House perched up there so um, the author in this book goes on to talk about a few more things and uh, one of the key messages and points from this authorship is that virtue and tranquility are the highest values of a stoic of a stoic lifestyle so having virtue and being tranquil so virtue what does virtue mean from a from a stoic's perspective it means living life and having high moral standards and uh, they say that it's important to live a life that is aligned to your own set of values. Um, we all get a chance to inherit culture, heritage um, and values from our parents, our religion, our, um, our place of birth and the environment that we live in. But at some point we all need to set our own set of values um, and live to those values and for everything that we do to hopefully be aligned closely aligned to those values um, and from a Stoics perspective um, regarding virtue the synonyms that people tend to use to describe what a virtue is is living a life of goodness living a life of honesty living a life of righteousness living with dignity integrity trustworthiness decency and merit so a lot of uh, really really powerful powerful words there that stimulate some great emotions I guess in most of us because at the end of the day most people want to live a life like that but uh, most importantly not only to live with all of those virtues but also to live with tranquility with peace and harmony and tranquility means to rid yourself of negative emotions and uh, when we all sit and think about think about it how many people are negative? Everywhere you look these days, you look in the media, you look on Facebook, social media, electronic media, wherever ever you look, all you hear of is bloody negativity. And this author raises a powerful point that it's this negativity that brings with it our disharmony. If you want tranquility, if you want to be calm, relaxed, and feel good about yourself and the world, then you can't be a negative person. You can't find it in a, a circle of friends who are constantly bloody negative. You know, to be tranquil, to be peaceful, means that you need to rid yourself of negative, destructive emotions. And as the author here says, you know, don't let your emotions, don't let your negative emotions dominate your intellect because we're smarter than that. We can live above that. You don't need to live with negativity, even though you're surrounded by it. Then the author goes on to talk about something that we all seem to think about now and then but a lot of people just don't get it now, to learn to want 
what you already have. Now, it's easy to try to be distracted, to look elsewhere, uh, because there, there are distractions everywhere. But the author here calls us to action, and rightly so, and says that we all need to learn to want what we already have, to be more grateful by using negative visualization. So what's negative visualization? The author here talks about the fact that the Western world has a big issue. And that issue is that we, uh, we're on a hedonic treadmill known as hedonic adaption. Um, which basically is a term which suggests that the more material possessions we have, the more we want to chase. And once, once we gain them, whatever we gain, uh, you know, as we said, the new postcode, the new car, the new girlfriend, um, sooner or later, once you gain them, especially men, once you gain them, you get bored, and then you want to chase more, um, remembering that the man who left his wife for, for a mistress, for a girlfriend, will once again leave that mistress for somebody who's younger and prettier, and the cycle will perpetuate and just keep on going. It just doesn't end there. It never never ends there is the experience that we all have seen around us over the years and that's because of this hedonic treadmill because the, the more we chase the more we gain the more we want the more we want to chase so uh, the author then talks about that, that we need to imagine to stand back and imagine and use this negative visualization and ask yourself the question, how would life be if you didn't have the people and things that you currently enjoy? Like we all talk about visualization and uh, affirmations, but negative visualization, I'm hearing for the first time now, but uh, I find it very, very powerful. And that is to sit and reflect and to ask yourself, what would your life be if you didn't have the things, the people that you currently have in your life? Um, and what that does is it gives you a instant surge of appreciation. Because at the end of the day, each and every one of us have everything that we need in our lives to be happy, to be satisfied, and to be fulfilled. It's just that we need to uh, identify it by uh, this negative, or was it negative visualization? Yes, negative visualization to, uh, to bring it to the, to the forefront of our thinking and of our appreciation. The third point that comes from this book is that we need to be okay. We need to be okay with the things that are, are outside of our control. Not everything in our lives, not everything that crosses our path, we can control. But the moment that you become okay with the things that are outside your control um, is the time that you set yourself free. Um, we need to change our attitude for things that we can't control because this will bring us tranquility. And we need to stop being distracted. Don't waste time and energy on things that you can't control and as we said, by all means, be mindful of it. Keep it, uh, keep it uh, at the back of your mind, but don't over focus on it. Don't waste your time worrying about the weather. 
Don't waste your time worrying about politics. And once you do something, once you make a decision, whatever decision you make, once you make that decision, according to this author, just forget about it. I do this all the time with my stockbroker, Tim, and I've said to him time and time again, once we decide to buy, once we decide to sell, I will never ever go back and look at that decision and whinge about whether or not we could have made more money or lost less money. We just make a decision and we get on with it. Because once we've decided to do something, then we cannot control what happens after that point. And that in itself brings us tranquility and it brings us respect and it enhances our relationship and gives us wings to be able to continue trading and doing our thing without feeling bad about what we've done if it doesn't work out. So the author here has a last call to action and that is to just focus on giving your best performance because your best performance, your best performance is all that you can control and that is the key to feeling free and feeling tranquil. And don't feel crushed. This is an important point. Don't ever feel crushed if you lose. Just humbly accept it, move on, and don't dwell on it. That's one of the keys, I guess, one of the many key messages to come out of this book summary. So thank you very much for joining me on this wonderful episode of Jim's 5am Club <coughs> on this cold, cold morning. But it's great. It's great to be up and about. Great to be celebrating life in this wonderful city of Sydney. And it's great to be, uh, for me, to have delivered my third vlog of the morning. It's about 6.30 now. Sunrise will be happening in the next 10 minutes. But already I've generated three vlogs and uh, I've got a target of five for the day. So it looks like I'll be clocking up another five and getting closer to my target of a thousand in English. So thank you for joining me and uh, I wish you all the best for this uh, Tuesday. Christos Anesti. Enjoy the day, make the most of it. Let's be the wind beneath our wings and uh, see where today leads us. I've got training, so I won't be going to work and I'll catch a ferry round to uh, Piermont later, later on and hopefully do another vlog on that ferry. Yasas, take care and we'll chat again from Jim's 5am club on this Tuesday this autumn Tuesday and I'm sure it's going to be a cracker of a day and uh, let's just have a look through the uh, through this little uh, porthole which is over here and I love taking photos from this location Yasas take care and bye for now and we'll have a little ferry coming past shortly just to make it uh, uh, a pretty sort of sight. There you go, a bit of creativity for you to uh, to enjoy today. Yasas and bye for now. Cheers.